Hello book nerds. This is Margaret with a K where we read together and review together. So what we're reading is The Finish Line by Kate Stewart. I've already started. I'm on page 21, which is chapter three. So I've already read the first two books of the Ravenhead series, which are Flock and Exodus. So to read with me, you need to read those books first, okay? I wish I would have thought of this idea when I was reading Exodus because that book, no spoilers, is a roller coaster. Um, here is, you know, video proof of the complete wreck that I was reading the last little bit of Exodus. So, you know, do with that what you will. Make sure you enter these books knowing that it's going to destroy you. I'm not going to lie. It's hard for me to read this because Exodus was so rough. So as I, and hopefully you, move through this book, I will be adding updates to this vlog about how I feel and what we're going through. And hopefully you can relate and we can do this together. Now I've got chapter four um, and I am a little emotional just because... Um, Tobias's um, memory, his flashback to when him and Dom were kids, um, was kind of a lot. I find myself really, really, really wanting Tobias and Sean to make a better connection throughout this book. Even though Cecilia is Tobias's girl, I I don't know. My baby Sean always has my heart. Like, I love Tobias, but I'm just hoping, I don't know, what if, like, Sean gets divorced? I'm here for that. All right, good morning. I'm a little, uh, I'm actually um, right at 50%, and there are some things that we need to talk about. First things first is I think I'm understanding that the current timeline and the timeline of Tobias's memories are gonna catch up to each other in the end is what I think is happening. So from those memories, we learned um, that Tobias has met Cecilia's mom when she was pregnant with Cecilia. And then all those years that she was working all these jobs and she was still poor was because she was sending money and toys and all this jazz to Dom and Tobias because she felt bad for them living in Delphine's nasty ass house. So there's that. So right now, Cecilia is struggling to let Tobias in. So they love each other, right? They love each other a fucking lot, but she's like been hurt so bad. And I mean, you can't blame her because like he fucked everything up. So every now and again, she gives into him. And on page 147, I was like, oh my God, let's read it. Tossing her head back in agitation, she slams her eyes shut as I press a second finger, filling her before nipping her clit. Who am I? She lifts her hips, searching for friction. In response, I hook her legs over my shoulders, ignoring my greedy dick as it demands its rightful place. But it's greed I shove away, needing to feast. Who loves you, Cecilia? I enunciate each word carefully, knowing they'll bring her back to the first night I brutally kissed her in that clearing, a place that has since become sacred to the both of us. I want her to know, even then, I wanted her for myself, the way I still want her. I've been starving for her, but it's penance I'm paying for then, before there can be a now. Can you imagine? He says, who loves you, Cecilia? I can't. Now he's like pouring his heart out to Cecilia a little bit later. He says, I know that, Cecilia, but there are no magic words. There are no gestures grand enough or deeds good enough to make up for what I've done to him, to you, to Sean. I couldn't figure out how to work my way around it then to get back to you, and I can't figure it out now. So maybe I need you to keep punishing me, he chokes out. Maybe it's the only way I'll be able to live with myself. I'll endure it every day for the rest of my fucking life just to be with you. I'll do anything, he chokes again. And we can joke about this situation, but this is truly hell for me. 
I love you, Cecilia, but it fucking hurts. Well, no fucking shit, it hurts us too. Like, books just do something to you. You can't help but cry. It hurts so bad. Even though I feel like this is a redemption book, like, this is supposed to heal me in some sort of way, like, it still hurts. Okay, so she gave in. I've been waiting forever for this. I mean, we're like over halfway through and she's just now giving in. This is about to get good. 70% done now with the book and it's kind of lax right now. It's a lot of Tobias and Cecilia arguing and then making up and arguing and making up. But I have this feeling that like this impending doom feeling like something major is going to happen. Like there's something really, really big that Tobias is hiding and I just haven't figured out what it is yet. But I feel like when I find out, it's not gonna be good. All right, so I finished last night. Um, I am not ready to talk about it yet. And you know, cause if you know, you know, and if you don't know, then you should. You should read the books. Um, I just thought that I need to tell you guys that um, it's raining outside. So the day after I finished the book, it's raining outside. I'm not okay. I'm not okay. Okay, so I've had most of the day to process this. And I know my tabs are like, <laughs> ugly. I just threw them in there literally just now. I was marking my page with these. So this is better than that. This book was nothing short of a roller coaster. So a lot of up and down and up and down and up and down. But once you get like to the end part, right? Like right about here, like where my first tab is. So here, this is the last little bit of the book. It's literally impossible to stop reading. Anything that has to do with Dominic pretty much makes me cry. Um, so this little section I'm going to read to you um, is from Tobias's POV. So Tobias says, For the most part, I was Dominic's father despite my title. And the day before he died, I took the one thing he wanted most in the world away from him. He died in love with you. I feed from him and broke his heart, his trust. What reason did he have not to step in front of those bullets? Her eyes widen and she shakes her head furiously. You can't possibly think that. I know you can't think that. Maybe I do. You're lying to yourself, Tobias. Her navy eyes demand mine. Always brothers. She repeats Dom's last words to me. You were the reason he took those bullets. He saved us both by saving you first. Don't. Don't do this to me. Please. I've never seen him light up like that with any woman. That's what he said to me that night. That's what you wanted to know when you were sober. He smiled when he said it, Tobias. I wish you could have seen that smile because if you had been there, if you had seen it, you would know without a doubt that he wanted you to be happy, even if that meant losing me. What we had was beautiful, but you're placing too much importance on the wrong relationship. I can see it in your eyes and you know it's the truth. But admitting it means admitting he died for you. And he did. Saving you, Tobias. He loved you just as fiercely and unconditionally as you did him. He was angry. But just as protective of you and your happiness. And that's why he saved you. The truth is, he pushed you out of the way that night. Before he caught any bullet to shield me. He gave his life for yours. He refused to accept that, and that's what's hurting you most. It's past time you face it and accept it. I'm not the only one he saved that night, Tobias. You have to accept his sacrifice. Even if you're angry about it, you have to accept that his love for you was just as strong. And you have to accept that he forgave you, and loved you enough to want you to be happy. You have to unshackle yourself from this guilt, 
or you'll never be able to accept the rest of the gift he gave you. You have to thank him by living. Do you see what I mean? How heartbreaking this is. Okay, so if we fast forward a little bit, um, we're to the part where there's a standoff in Cecilia's living room and there's guns pointed everywhere. And Tobias has a gun pointed to his own head, threatening to kill himself if anyone hurts Cecilia. And he says, just let her go. Antoine scoffs, so fucking scripted. Who's pathetic, Ezekiel? Gun to my head, I stare off with Antoine and Adair. It's me he wants, and I know, despite his threat, I'm the real bargaining chip. I have to believe that he'll attempt to talk me out of taking his prize away and spare her. It's my only move. It was worth it, Tresor. So worth it, I say, squeezing the trigger just enough to have Antoine gripping the sides of her wing back. His eyes fixed on me. He's starting to believe me. Fireflies, Cecilia says softly, and I turn my attention toward her. That's our outside force, Tobias. They were the ones that looked out for us. Her eyes water, just like mine. As she studies the gun pressed to my head, wouldn't you agree? I nod. We were never alone, Tobias. Okay, remember how I said earlier that I was really, really like pining for a better relationship between Sean and Tobias? Well, we got it. So here's a key conversation between Sean and Tobias. Sean says, the worst day of our lives was the day we broke your heart by choosing Cecilia. The worst day of our lives was the day we broke your heart. If you thought we left willingly, that we would leave her willingly for the cause, you were fucking wrong. Of course we cared and we didn't want to lose it, but we left. We left willingly and gave her up temporarily because of the sacrifices you made for us, Tobias. For the years you spent doing everything for us, risking your life, for us because that's the type of man you taught us to be and we started missing your love and loyalty the minute we lost it the second worst day of our lives was the day you broke our height our hearts by being in love with cecilia but that very same day you broke our hearts you showed us what true love looks like and you gained it by sacrificing everything including us and our cause for her something we both failed to do and in turn you earned her and you do deserve her for it. When you tried to defend yourself, we knew you were right, but we were cut so deep we didn't want to fucking hear it. Because losing her completely was good enough reason to resent you, and our hands weren't as dirty if you were equally as guilty. But we knew you were right, and I think deep down we both knew we were on borrowed time with her. And fuck how I hated you for it. Don realized it that night because he caught on a lot faster like he always did. He understood. I didn't fucking want to. But he always saw things clearly for what they were, even if it hurt. It took me a lot longer to sort it out. And Tessa, that woman, she went through a hell showing me where I went wrong, but you deserve to know you've had my forgiveness for a lot longer than you think. But the truth is now, I just want my fucking brother back. In a flash, I cut the back of his neck and press our foreheads together. Always brothers. I whispered through a shaky breath as we clutched each other tightly, mending the bridge that separated us for years. Okay, this is going to be hard for me to read. But like I said, this book is a roller coaster. So this is um, Tobias finally talking to Dom. So it's been years now like six or seven years now since Dom has died and he still hasn't spoke to him. So the book says, I still don't know what I believe about the afterlife. I hope, and mostly for those I love, that there's a place where nothing is ever left unsaid. To always suffer to say to those we lost, there's a place to confess because I have so much to say. I run my hand through my hair as I work around the burn in my chest. Sorry to report school is still five days long. You forced me to take all the credit for being the man behind the curtain, but that's not how it started, is it, Dom? 
And I don't think anyone would believe that it was a suggestion of a five-year-old boy who saw the world for what it is that set it all into motion. I made you a promise, Dom, but I lost you. Keep it. <laughs> and looking back, I don't feel it was worth it. As something... As selfish as it is, I would trade everything we've done just to get you back. Always brothers. You were so fucking intuitive, but did you, did you really know? I fucking miss you every single day, every goddamn day. And if I'm destined to live a long life without you, I guess the least I can do is thank you. Thank you, Dominic. I guess if you can hear me, save me a place in the passenger seat. I'm tired, Dom. So help me watch over us, okay? We did it, brother. What is in these pages? Like, who can write a book like this and get away with it? Like, I have fucking emotional damage. And then the very, the very, very end is a Sean POV, and it's the only Sean POV that we have throughout the whole series. So essentially what's happening is that he's getting up in the middle of the night to do hood stuff. And his 14-year-old son, named Dom, catches him and he's like, Dad, I'm not stupid. Like, I know you're not just going for drives out here. So he gets in the car with his dad. And they're driving around. <sighs> Sean says, I was your age when it started. He says, that's some epic tale, Dad. That mouth of yours. Can you keep it shut? We idle on the side of the road, gazing on at the black outline of the mountains in the night sky. I turn toward him in the seat. I guess what I'm really asking is, can you keep a secret? <laughs> this book wasn't even supposed to exist. It was supposed to be a duo instead of a trio. And look what this did to me. Do you think this is bad? You should have seen me reading Exodus. Because Exodus is way worse than this. And this is emotionally damaging. Mostly damaging. Well, at any rate, um, thanks for reading with me um, and following along on my first vlog. Probably it's a terrible vlog, but we'll get better. I just want to have a space to talk to people about my books and how much I love them. I know there's got to be people out there who love books as much as I do. Um, so um, look forward to my review of all three books. And hopefully I can make it through that without crying like I did this. <laughs>